Bacterial spot on peppers is a disease that we can run into occasionally throughout years, but for 2015, it's been a real problem. It is a bacterial disease that is actually seed transmitted. So when you start your own peppers in the house, you don't even know they're infected until after we get them transplanted into the garden and once temperatures start getting a little warmer. We don't see symptoms development, which include brown lesions, water soaked, and those lesions will continue to grow. The leaves are gonna turn yellow and we're actually going to have death of that leaf completely. But those symptoms, as I was stating, don't show up until we're at temperatures typically between 70 and 80 degrees. So it may not be until the middle of May to the beginning of July, depending on the weather, before we start seeing that disease development. Once we have disease development starting to show up in our peppers, the foliage is the first area that we see it, and it can spread very, very quickly throughout the garden. It's gonna be rain splashed or above irrigated water splashed. The garden that we're in today actually is using all soaker hose situations. So the spreading is actually coming from the frequent rains that we've been experiencing this summer. And that's what's moving the bacteria from plant to plant and leaf to leaf. The bacteria is just gonna enter the plant through the natural openings of those leaves. As it starts to infect, as already stated, we're gonna get those brown water soaked lesions that will continue to grow and spread throughout the plant material. Now, once we start getting fruit development, those spots can also develop on the fruit. So they're gonna be a raised cankery type uh, disease that develops on those fruits. In general, if you're able to get any fruit production from these plants, it's very limited because of the loss of foliage, the stress on the plant overall. So how do we manage it overall? We're gonna be trying to avoid overhead irrigation whenever possible. When you start seeing initial symptoms, removing those leaves as quickly as possible. And if we need to, we're completely removing that plant so we're not getting transmission to the rest of the garden and the rest of the peppers in that plant. It will overwinter from year to year in the soil, so you want to make sure you do good crop rotation within the garden. If you can do one to two years without peppers in the same location would be very helpful. The other trick is since it's seed transmitted, you need to make sure you're using good reliable seed and the seed packet should be able to state if it is disease, re, uh, disease free to begin with. And those might be options you wanna look for in the future if you keep running into this issue. The other trick I forgot to mention when we're looking at crop rotation is this disease will actually move into tomatoes too. So when we look at crop rotation, it isn't just we wanna avoid peppers, we wanna avoid tomatoes in the exact same area also so the bacterial disease won't move to the tomatoes and you continuously have this issue year in and year out. With that, we are gonna to try to manage bacterial spot as best as we can. If your garden gets way too succumbed, you may have to stick with buying your peppers from local farmers market for that summer and try to sh um, grow peppers again next year.